Hello, this is Sherry Jarvis with Young Living Essential Oils, our Wellness Warriors team. And today we're doing an interview with a pretty lady you see on the screen here, Marcy Doran. And she recently went to the Young Living Animal Conference in Mona, Utah. So I'm going to ask her a few questions and she's going to share with us. All right. So Marcy, and then at the end, if you want to ask some questions, if we have time, you can ask her some questions. We'll keep this to 40 minutes. Marcy, what are some of the titles of the classes that you went to? Oh, wonderful. Uh, some of the titles of the classes were uh, Healing Touch for Animals. Uh, of course, I went to the canine raindrop and also the equine raindrop. Um, let's see, I also helped to choose oils for your pets. And then an equine optimal performance. Those were the main ones that I went to. Okay, and which one was your favorite? The Equine Optimal Performance by far. All right. Can you tell us why and what are some of the highlights from that class that you can remember? Okay. Uh, one, it, it was kind of right down my alley. It was put on by another uh, professional barrel racer. And she just had some really, really good tips of how to use oils on our horses uh, prior and post of our racing with them and how to use them. And she even has some uh, YouTube uh, items that we can uh, look at later on also. And her name was Robin Warlow Monte. I hope I pronounced it right. Uh, and what uh, things did she say? Why did she use the oils for performance? What, what was enhanced? Or can you share anything like that? Sure. Um, she uses them. She's got a, a muscle technique. And also, um, uh, another, uh, let me grab my note here, another te technique that she uses, but uh, just stress and anxiety to help the horses deal with it before uh, they compete. And uh, she calls she calls it unpeeling the onion and uh, she talks a lot about uh, the gut and the sugar and and uh, how to support your wellness uh, with the oils with the the gut and uh, also uh, she uses a lot of like abundance belief which I was uh, quite uh, taken with her using those two oils. You know, I always use Valor and, and uh, Dragon Time and, and, of course, Stress Away uh, I use with mine. So for her to, uh, and then she also has a lung meridian that she uses Raven and coons. Uh, she has an energy workout that she uses cool as a rule and uh, on of course with the legs she'll use Panaway and Copiaba and that so uh, she'll use clarity and release. There's just an enormous amount of information and and things that uh, she uses and, and that. And she has some techniques that are different from just your, your raindrops. She 
always gives her equine raindrop uh, four days before competition, but she has some smaller uh, techniques that she'll use just hours before or after. She has a, a technique that she'll use right after they get off the trailer. And uh, that, or like I said, just before uh, they go to, to work. So it's just really, really a lot of information in a short amount of time. What are the main benefits that she thought she achieved by using the oils pre and post her bell racing? Uh, she found that with the muscles, the horse's muscles came back uh, with a lot less stress on them. And of course, uh, just the horse's attitude with the stress away and the relief. Their, their attitude were, was always good. But the, the muscles was the, the biggest thing. Uh, the clarity, she found that the horses could focus uh, a lot better when she uses clarity with them. Interesting. Were there any precautions that she um, gave you as far as using the oils pre and post with your barrel horse? Any precautions? Well, her main thing is to make sure that the horses uh, help choose the oils. Oh. And, that, um, you know, if they didn't like an oil, she was not going to use it all, on them. So, you know, there's uh, uh, some oils that she might... Um, think of using that day and the horse just doesn't want to use them so how did she know the horse didn't want to use it the horse will actually turn away when she presents that oil up okay. to their nose mm -hmm. and just or back away from it even okay uh, ones that they like they they'll act like they want to eat the bottle almost yes. and mine do too right to it and and look at it and, mm -hmm. and that. Does she use mainly topical application or does she use some ingesting and aromatherapy like a diffuser in a trailer or a stall or what is her main application mode? Her main application uh, from what I got of it was more topical than anything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because she was always working with rubbing it on their neck and and then, you know, not really ingesting, but um, uh, letting them smell it ar aromically and, and that. Um, she used it more that way or she talked about it more that way. Okay. And she even can't, she even had, uh, brings um, honey into into it, and uh, she'll use honey and thieves and and peppermint, and uh, just for them to you know smell and and. Uh, Did she put that in the water? Uh, clary sage is one that she'll, she'll put in the water. She has put lavender, but she says the, some horses don't like it as well. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, all of them the like peppermint. Thing. Yeah, yeah. The peppermint, yeah. They it seem seems like, like they all like. I have horses that like just mints. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but so that's when you come up with the peppermint. Um, did you get to uh, experience or see any um, application on, on any, any animals? And can you tell us about that? Yes, uh, I went to both the canine and the equine uh, raindrop. And uh, also we had a uh, healing touch for animals that we had, a, they had, an actual pen set up 
that they brought the, the horses into, and then they had another tent that they used that they put, put the dogs up on the table and did like the canine equine and then the, the healing touch um, was one that, that we watched. And what uh, else did, yeah. they, did they use mostly uh, the emotional blends for that? Well, both the equine and the canine, they, they used the young living, ugh, young living raindrop oils uh, right out of the kit. Okay. And then, uh, so, you know, they, they always spoke about getting your, your raindrop kits and, and using the oils that are, are right there for them. Oh, okay. Um, could you tell me something about... Um, if a person uh, does, isn't sure about how to do a raindrop or can't physically stand and do that, did they have any suggestions of other methods of giving raindrops? Well, now that one I kind of found out a little bit after the conference. Uh, we went out to dinner, my friend Samantha Straw and I, and just happened to meet a lady who's been a presenter at the conference before, but wasn't this year. So she was just a spectator this year. But she came and had dinner with us, and we got to discussing um, something. And I had not brought it up uh, every during the the equine raindrop there were so many questions that you almost couldn't get a word in edgewise and so when they were talking about some of the presenters and and what we had gone to and that uh i told her i had gone to the equine but i was kind of concerned about being able to stand so long and and putting the oils like on the horses backs and that and she said, you could put several oils in a spray bottle and spray them on the back, but you had to be very careful not to have it in a, a misty spray that would go too far. You know, you don't want it ever to get in their eyes or around their, uh, under their tail or anything like that. So, you know, it's something to be very, very careful with. But she, you know, mentioned that I, that I could use some of the oils uh, a few at a, at a time and then do uh, like the Vitaflex and the feathering and that uh, that way. And it would be easier for me that I wouldn't be standing so long. So I thought that was absolutely a wonderful idea. Yeah. And yeah, she, she, uh, uh, on Facebook and, and then she has her own, she even goes to the national finals and sells, uh, oils and works on some of the horses there and and that was just really really interesting i felt like i got extra info that way too and just meeting meeting so many other people oh i lost your sound there we go i unmuted myself there, there we go <laughs> Um, that's one of the best things about going to any Young Living event I've found is the connections and the people that you meet outside of the actual presentations. And so you hit a pot of gold there. What was her name? Judy Gillum. Okay. Um, and you make she... lifelong friends like that that you can resource even after you get home because one of the best things I have found about Young Living is that the people are willing to help each other cross line and everything. So um, you have a, a great connection now there because you went to the conference. And um, so uh, we're learning that there are some alternative ways that you can 
present the raindrop to the horse and still do it in a safe way. I'm sure she uh, said that you would put those oils in a carrier oil when you were going to spray it on. Or did she want yes. you to put the carrier oil on afterwards? Uh, she said either way, really. Yeah. Um, I figured. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, whatever was easier for me. But I, I thought, you know, maybe I'll I'll go with putting some carrier oil in with it, and uh, maybe not the the uh, oh, what was the the name that that one of them used? Not the hot oils, but the warmer oils. Maybe do them individually so that you can use a carrier oil with them. Uh, you know, you could use the spray. Does so, anyone else? It'll be interesting to play with it. Um, go ahead, and if you want to, you can unmute yourself if you have a question for her, anything about horse oils, since she's talking about that, then we'll go to the canine. Does anyone have a question for Marcy? I do. <laughs> I do. Go ahead. Okay. So, okay. On the raindrop for the horses, um, did they touch on any information on horses that have heaves or breathing disorders on what you could do specifically for them? Um, let me grab. I think there was some uh, information that they uh, used a little bit. Um, not sure there. I know there was something there. Um, some of these notes. When they were doing the equine demonstrations on them, did they say there was any reason you would not do one with a horse that has heaves? Or any reason no. you would not do a no, they rainbow on a certain horse because of anything? No, they they really didn't. Uh, they they thought it it was uh, um, I think we lost her a little bit. Uh, issues that they they would have and that they uh, did not say you know anything about that that I, I recall. Okay. But, well, uh, uh, Carrie, since she doesn't have an answer right off the top of her head, we can um, check out in our desk reference and get back to you on that. But it uh, sounds like, can you guys still hear me? Shake your head yes if you can hear me, because it looks like our uh, 